Friends, it is good to be with you for this midweek Lenten worship service here at Zion United Church of Christ. We are so glad that you are able to join us for worship. And we want you to know that you are always welcome to join us at Zion UCC. This Lent, we are looking up as we consider all that Jesus invites us to be up to in his name. This is our What Are You Up To Lenten Worship series. The service that you are viewing is designed to be a simple, uplifting moment of song, scripture, and prayer. As you get ready to turn your heart to worship, you're invited to grab some things around you that might help set the stage. To remind you that even though you're not in a sanctuary, you are still on holy ground, worshiping God who is among you. You might want to light a candle or even grab some incense to burn. We'll turn to those items a little later in the service as we go to God in prayer. To get started, we are singing our Lenten chorus, You Raise Me Up. An important part of the season of Lent is recognizing how fragile we are. Our lives are not perfect, but God's grace covers our brokenness and offers to us the healing mercy that we need. For these services, we are praying the Psalms, and tonight we are turning to Psalm 19 to find comfort and care. Let's join together as we pray this psalm. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, 
rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. By the grace of God, may your spirit be uplifted. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The scripture we are exploring this week is John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. This is John's version of Jesus cleansing the temple. We see how angry Jesus becomes when he witnesses injustice in the most holy of places. This is also that moment as Jesus upsets the status quo that people begin to take notice of what his ministry is truly about. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple with the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. 
The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. In the scripture we just heard, Jesus acts out of righteous anger at the injustices he witnesses. Too often our anger is lived out in unhealthy ways, but there are times when our anger moves us to embody God's mercy and compassion when we see a wrong before us. This is not an anger to shy away from, but an anger whose flame refines and transforms like a natural wildfire that cleanses the brush so new life can bloom. Our first message that uplifts is a poem called A Just Anger by Marge Piercy. Anger shines through me. Anger shines through me. I am a burning bush. My rage is a cloud of flame. My rage is a cloud of flame in which I walk seeking justice like a precipice. How the streets of the Iron City flicker, flicker, and the dirty air fumes. Anger storms between me and things, transfiguring, transfiguring. A good anger acted upon is beautiful as lightning and swift with power. A good anger swallowed, a good anger swallowed clots the blood to slime. Our next message that uplifts is a modern creed by Yong Ting Jin, who is from Hong Kong. We believe in Jesus Christ, our savior and liberator, the expression of God's redeeming and restoring love, the mark of humanness, source of courage, power, and love. God of God, light of light, ground of our humanity. We believe that God resides in slums, lives in broken homes and hearts, suffers our loneliness, rejection, and powerlessness. But through death and resurrection, God gives life, pride, and dignity, provides the content of our vision, offers the context of our struggle, promises liberation to the oppressor and the oppressed, hope to those in despair. We believe in the activity of the Holy Spirit, who revives our decaying soul, resurrects our defeated spirits, renews our hope of wholeness, and reminds us of our responsibility in ushering in God's new order here and now. We come now to our extended time of prayer. If you have your incense or candles ready, and if you haven't already lit them, you are invited to do that now. This ancient practice of bringing sight and sound to our worship connects us to those things that our ancestors of faith did calling upon God and welcoming God's presence among them. In Psalm chapter 141, we see the use of incense. It says, I call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to me. Give ear to my voice when I call on you. Let my prayer rise up 
as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. During our time of prayer, you'll be invited to speak aloud at different points that refrain from Psalm 141. It will appear on your screen. Let us pray. We listen for your voice, O God. In the story of Jesus turning over tables in the temple, sometimes we have to break down what is no longer working and start again with a new foundation. As we consider what tables we are ready to turn in our own lives, we pray that we can be up to something good for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. And so this week we start with thanksgiving for these acts of uplifting goodness. For 500 coloring books put together for the kids at Riley Hospital for Children. For willingness to let go and make room for more life for enriching neighbors near and far. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. We call upon you, O God, to incline your ear and extend your love and healing power for these laments for letting go that brings grief. The injustices we fail to see, but you see, O oh God. The tables left unturned. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. We call upon you, O oh God, to give us the strength and courage to be up to something good for the sake of the good. In this moment, in our mind's eye, we imagine and offer our commitment to one small thing this week that will lift someone up, elevate and affirm the good when we see it, and bring a bit more calm or joy where we are. And if we find that we are not up to it, we pray we can accept the goodness of others and feel your encouraging love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
Friends, we hope this midweek service has been an uplifting moment for you as you have turned to God to hear the good news, to lift up your prayers, and to ponder about how you can get up to something good. Go forth now and uplift those around you. When someone asks you, what are you up to? You can respond, with God's help, I'm up to something good. And you're invited to say that out loud right now with me. When someone asks you, what are you up to? You can respond, with God's help, I'm up to something good. Let the people say, Amen.